So welcome. Thank you so much for coming back to watch Rexpirations. My name is Robin Whitford, and we have a very special guest that I probably don't need to introduce. <laughs> I kind of feel like um, most rug hookers, if they've been uh, doing any kind of hooking and watching anything online, know about Deanne Fitzpatrick and her studio in Amherst, Nova Scotia. So thank you so much, Deanne. And oh, you're welcome. very welcome. <laughs> it is so fun. And in your home studio today. We are. I just I just had my last COVID vaccination. So I thought uh, I'll just come home and today yeah. and just sort of get cozy. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I hope you feel yeah. good tomorrow. Too. I do. Yeah, I feel uh, I have felt fine throughout the whole thing. So. Oh, great. Yeah. So we'll get started with the questions. Um, I asked the same questions and we never know where they'll take us. Um, yep. And some of these, I'm sure you've shared them before. And I know I've heard some bits and pieces. So um, I hope you don't mind. They're kind of um, they might be repetitive to you, but some of our viewers might not know. Yeah, uh, but no, it's fine. Who or what got you started into rug cooking? Uh, my sister, when I was 16 years old, she had a farmhouse in Amherst, Nova Scotia. I'm drawing, so that's yeah. why I'm looking down. Um, she had a farmhouse in Amherst, Nova Scotia, and I would look at those rugs and I'd think, oh my goodness, what's, you know, what is that? Did someone pull every one of those? And so that's when my interest first developed and when I first saw hooked mats. And then about eight years later, she said she was going on a course uh, to learn how to make them. And I thought about that mat that was on her porch floor it was one she had like at an, like she bought at an auction maybe or an antique store. And I thought, yeah, you know, I'm interested in that. And I was never crafty or I didn't have any, I didn't have any like creative, I thought abilities really. I never considered myself that way. And uh, I was a reader. That was, you know, kind of what I did. I like to read on my spare time. So, um, and I went, and as soon as I started hooking this woman named Marion Kennedy, who was probably in her 60s at the time, it was a meeting of the Rug Hooking Guild of Nova Scotia, and it was in Tatamagush, Nova Scotia. And uh, this woman named Marion Kennedy had a little kit prepared for all of us, and mine was four scrolls and a navy blue background and it was all a recycled wool cloth cut and she showed me the first stitch and Doris Eaton was there that at that time you know who Doris is of yeah. course and uh and that was the first time I met Doris and I did like four or five stitches and I thought oh you know this is manageable like I could do this yeah. and then she said like they're not you know quite even or whatever. And I said, so should I take them out and do them again? She said, no, you definitely shouldn't. You, you, uh, uh, just, just finish it. That's what she told me. No, you finish it. They'll get better as you go along. And it was good advice. And I've given that advice to so many people. Yeah. Same thing. Just finish. You finish your first one and you get that flood of feeling like of accomplishment is just the best thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I'm curious, because did you go to that workshop with your sister? Yeah, I went with three of my sisters, actually. Okay. Uh, four of us. Yeah, four of us went. And, um, and we just stayed overnight in this sort of like residence. And, uh, and even that night when I was going to bed, I just wanted to keep hooking. And I just <laughs> kind of felt like I because they I remember them saying to me, like, they were having wine and stuff. And I think I might have had some wine, too. I don't know. But uh, like in the evening in the room, but I wasn't interested in anything else. And they said, you really like this. And I said, yeah, I really like this. Yeah, yeah I really yeah. like it. I didn't know like that. I really, 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 really liked, it. liked it. But I liked it. I knew I liked it. it was very and did like your sisters feel the same? Fun. No, no, oh. no. Um, two of those sisters have made a few mats over the years. like. Yeah. And the other one never finished the one that she started and my mother finished it for her. Um, and like, she's not, she's not interested in craft at all. Like she likes the mats. She likes the rugs that I make and she has lots of my rugs, but yeah, no, they never, they never really took to it in the same way that I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's always kind of neat to see how in, in the same family, the same, you know, go to the same thing and it just hits differently. Yeah. I do have a sister though, Robin in the States, Sharon Perry. 
Mm-hmm. And Sharon, I taught Sharon maybe six or seven years later, and she took to it the way that I took yeah. to it. And her daughter has Loop by Loop Studio, yeah. Haley Perry, and she teaches. She'd be a good interview, actually. I did. Of- I just interviewed her last week. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I did not yeah. know you guys were related. It didn't click. Oh, she's my niece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, that's we what look- she told me last week. And I was like, oh, yeah. it's a small world. We look alike, yeah. actually, when you see us, myself and her yeah. mother. And yeah, so um, yeah, she's my niece and I love her. And she, so they really took to us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. Is there a part of the process, like of, of the whole rug making process, that is your favorite, like planning, drawing, working on it, finishing, or in, you know, a lot of other people know it's shopping for the supplies. <laughs> if I you had to choose one. The hooking off the rug, you know, because for me, the planning and the color and everything is all involved in the hooking because it's very process oriented mm-hmm. more than you know, I don't really color plan in the same way that I might have at one time. It's just a very intuitive process. And so I think it's actually the hooking itself. I enjoy drawing a little bit like, and I enjoy thinking about the rugs too. I love that. Like I enjoy, like if I'm going to sleep at night and I imagine like what that, how that's going to travel, you know, as I go Mm -hmm. further. Yeah. I like that part too, but mainly I like the hooking. How about you? Is there part that you like the best? I think it's the hooking. I think it's picking out the colors, like just pulling on them. And whether that's while I'm hooking or even before I've started hooking, it's, you know, making a pile. Right. Yeah. (laughs) And and I kind of, I think I hook a little bit like you in the sense that I have a a vague idea of what I want to do. Right. Or maybe a specific idea, but it doesn't necessarily happen in the way that I plan it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, For sure. Um, And that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there something that you wish you'd learned earlier or something maybe now when you tell new students like that sort of gave you stress at the beginning or maybe frustrated you like that you help people with to avoid that in their journey now? I think if I had learned early on that it was all about the process that that was the most important thing. I think that's impossible to learn and to know really as a beginner or as a young woman, I was 24 years old. But Mm -hmm. if I had known that, the earlier I had known that, the better I would have been at this, I think. Hmm. So what, what, what do you think was the focus then when you were, it was the rug, like the finished product was the focus? Hmm. To make a pretty rug, I think. Yeah, when I started. Yeah. And to complete the rugs. And I sold like, that's how I was, you know, within two years I was selling my rugs and I was making rugs to sell. And, Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was, you know, really, I always made rugs for myself and the way I wanted them to be, but I was also, um, I don't, I just don't, I, you know, I say that, but it's like wanting to know what you know when you're 47, when you're 22, you know what I mean? Like you can't really, um, yeah. So I started hooking rugs, like within two years of hooking rugs, I was selling my work. So I was making lots of small pieces and, you know, like if I had known that everything was going to work out the way it worked out I might have you know been a little bit more relaxed or you know but then it wouldn't have worked out the way it worked out yeah then it would have been all different (laughs) like I worked from morning till night you know yeah and uh, I did and I I hooked a lot and I I worked hard and I I appreciate every moment of it and this isn't what I usually ask people but you're a unusual guest (laughs) um did you have visions back when you were first selling your rugs that you would have a studio and, you know, the classes and everything going on that you do? Like, was that a dream that you had then? Uh, well, when I first started selling my rugs, I sold them like at craft sales and things like that. And, but I really wanted to be, a rec- I wanted it to be recognized as an art. And mm. I really had a desire that this craft that was losing momentum, because when I started hooking rugs, it was, there was a little bit of momentum but it was small 
Yeah. I really had a desire that this Atlantic Canadian craft would be recognized mm -hmm. as, you know, an Atlantic Canadian or, you know, that we would sort of regain our momentum in that. Yeah. And there were things happening like the Rug Cooking Guild of Nova Scotia was already established and, and they'd done mm -hmm. some good work, like people like Doris Eaton and Sylvia mm -hmm. MacDonald and, um, Doreen Kennedy and uh, and I'm just skimming the surface yeah. Kate Purdy Marion Kennedy there's tons of them um who worked very hard and continue to work there are many women mm -hmm. in that guild who continue to just give up their time so that rug hooking is as mm -hmm. common as coal again you know yeah. um so uh I I wanted that but I didn't sort of foresee that I would have, you know, I always thought I'd have someone to help me in the studio a bit. And I always hoped that my rugs would be in a gallery and recognized as art. Those are the two things that I wanted. Did I want a business? Yeah, I want it like to make a living. Yeah, yeah, which is what I'm doing. Yeah, I wanted that, but I didn't have like any big dreams. And I still don't like I like it the way it is. Uh, whatever stage I'm at, I usually like it the way it is. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how long have you had the store then? Like, I know you sold from your home for a long time. I how did. I had the store in my home for uh, 14 years and I've had it in the town for about 14 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Around that. Like I haven't got my dates exactly. Yeah. But, no. yeah <laughs> I so won't no. check it up. <laughs> no, you can't if you want. Then you can call. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm cool. terrible with dates. So <laughs> yeah, I am too. I'm not a history. Uh, I, you know, yeah. I'm not. I, I know the ideas that happen, but I'm not good with the dates. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Is there something, and I mean, I've watched your videos too, so I have an idea, but is there a tool or a material or something that you're like, if I couldn't use this, this would not be the same experience for me? It's a hundred percent, a hundred fifty percent my shed can frame. Yeah. The day that I got that frame and it was flat and it moved with me, I realized that everything was different. Yeah. I could have my hands free, you know, because you like were using a, a, a nail. That. I could hook with a crochet hook if I had to, but that <laughs> yeah. frame really made a difference. And my sister, Sharon said the same thing. Oh, yeah. Like, oh my gosh, it's a game changer. She said, it's a game changer. She talks really <laughs> fast. And uh, yeah. It, so that for me is my tool. Yeah. Because before you had the, that frame, you would have been using hoops, I'm a guessing. Hoop. Yes, a hoop that was duct taped together, like a <laughs> quilting hoop, because there wasn't at that time, there weren't like real rug hooking hoops. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had it duct taped like I had the. Yeah. Wow. So it was quite a nice change. Yeah, I imagine I, I do think, not oh, actually no, that's a lie. I use the I use that for my first five or six rugs. I did have a Puritan frame okay. and I had that for years and I did like that frame. It was a good frame, too. Yeah, I forgot mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Um, I had that for about a year. Yeah. I don't have a Puritan. I do have a gripper frame that somebody made and, yeah. and that's what I do. And, and I don't have, I've never tried a Shetty Camp and I keep looking at them. So one day I'll let you know, maybe I'll be like, oh my gosh, well, how did I live without this? <laughs> it, you know, it doesn't, I don't suppose, I don't suppose it doesn't have to be a Shetty Camp, but it has to be something that lets your body be free of your rug. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like if you you have an easel behind you, I notice. Imagine yeah. if that when you were painting, that easel was attached to you somehow. Yeah. It would really change how you could paint, right? Yeah. 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 So it's about the freedom, I think, anyway. Well, I've always wondered, again, I just wonder because I often sit in my lazy boy yeah. <laughs> with my lap, my frame on my lap. So I, and I have my hands free, but that's my, my thing about the, um, the shetty camp is I'll have to get a better chair to sit in. So I uh, think yeah. comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It should be straight back. That's the other thing. It allows me to keep my back straight. And when I'm leaning in the other one, I'm leaning over more. You know, when I was on a lap frame, I'm leaning over more. I mean, I use a lap frame occasionally still, but I like to sit it and keep my back straight. You know, I do lean in a bit, but it's better for you, I think, for me anyway. Well, I've got to try one one day. <laughs> well, um, yeah, you know, somebody may have one and you can just test it out, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, can you describe what rug hooking does for you? And I asked Haley this last week and because not everybody has a rug hooking business that I interview, but if you didn't have your business, if you, you know, decided not to, would you keep rug hooking? 
Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I mean, I hope that, you know, I hope that I will always hook rugs, you know, that I'll always, uh, because for me, what rug hooking is, it's kind of a place to go, mm -hmm. you know, it's sort of like a prayer in a way, like it's a place where I can go and I can be fully myself and I can totally belong. Mm -hmm. And it's very uh, meditative. It's very peaceful. It's very comforting and it's very expressive, right? So it's like the two things together is just like, I don't know. I just feel so fortunate, right? To have it and to love it, to have something that you love to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a friend who has ha, has a great life and has a you know ha, has everything that she could ever want. And uh, I remember her years ago saying to me, and she has an exceptional life, like in terms of um, uh, in terms of wealth and things, you know. And she said to me years ago, and this was before uh, she, you know did so well she said but I don't have that one thing that you have and mm. that's that passion for that thing and I can't buy that nobody can ever buy that so you're so lucky and that she's my good good friend we've been friends since we were children and and I always carry that with me because it was a real lesson you know not to chase um, and it just gives me chills to think about it and yeah. so sometimes when I see people like living the life, you know, I think, oh, geez, that looks really good. And then I remember that I have that one little thing that matters to me so much. And when we have that one thing that matters to us so much, it's like a really, a really special privilege and blessing in life, mm -hmm. whatever that thing is. Yeah. Yeah. That is very true. And I think what a gift that you've been able to find it at a young age that you did yeah. And then, you know, build your life around it to share oh. it with other people. Like that's, yeah, it's just been, there's been a lot of, for, a lot of good fortune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to bring up the photo that you shared with me of a yeah. rug and I'll just share it on the screen. So uh, everybody can see it. It is so beautiful. First of all, um, what can you tell us about it? Um, so Joe, who worked with me for a while was really in, and I, I've loved peonies for a long time. He was really into peonies. So he would bring me in, in the summer in June, he would always bring me in big bouquets of peonies as a gift. So I think peonies kind of sort of got caught up in me <laughs> and outside my studio, right where I'm looking now is an apple tree that goes in full blossom every few years. And then also last year, um, I had to go to Halifax for four days for a very special event. And uh, we were having a really great time. And outside my window was a magnolia tree. <gasps> uh -huh. And so all of these things came together and this pale shade of pink began to matter a lot to me. Now, this is a color that if you had asked me 20 years ago, I would have said ice queen pink. I don't really like that, you know, but it all came together for me. And I just loved, I just loved the combination of colors. So this was a study in, in that color, but also in getting, this is what I mean about getting lost in a piece and not knowing where it's going you know I just knew that I loved these things I loved peonies I loved magnolia I loved apple blossoms I I and um I love nature and when I walk down the road I look into the woods a lot I live on a well, wooded road and I look into the woods a lot and this is kind of what it's like when you're looking into the woods you're looking in and you're seeing through things, you know, and there's light shining in certain places. And it's just always really interesting. So that's as much as I can explain, to be honest. Is that enough? Of course. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, it's funny that about the pink, I had a discussion with a, a lady today who she said she'd like to, and well, it's still there because I was talking about it yesterday, but she's like, I like your, your pink flower, but she's like, I really don't like pink. And it reminded me, I didn't like pink growing up at all. Like probably the first half of my life, it was like, oh my gosh, if somebody bought me something pink, I would like never wear it. Or, you know, it was just not yeah. my color. 
And now I feel like I just can't get enough of it. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's funny how color can do that and change. And yeah, but I think what it is, is we change. Yeah. You know, we change and we respond to it differently, yeah. you know, too. Like we just, yeah. I don't know. I think I don't, I don't never sure, but <laughs> yeah, no color is kind of magical that way. Yeah. Um, and is this something you would have drawn a pattern of on your linen before you started or um, I drew some of those peonies on. And I drew some of those green, dark green, like the dark green kind of pine trees. I drew some of those fronds on. And I probably drew like, I drew some of the lines across, like the logs that are kind of going across. Yeah. But, you know, there would have been, I don't know. Well, there's a lot of lines, but it's be a very, (laughs) very rough sketch. Yeah. Yeah. Very rough. And it's hard to tell on the screen, but how big is this piece? Um, It is... I can't, I'm just guessing, but about 50 by 60, something like that inches. It's big. It's a big one. It's the cover of the Sunday letters book too. Yes. It is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Um, Again, because this is not, um, I feel like I want to ask you other questions because (laughs) <laughs> so I have you here. Um, but do you want to tell us about your new class coming up? I'm really curious. Oh, about- yeah, sure. So I found in my 50s, I really blossomed creatively. I have like I know that I have I can see I can see rugs like that that I could not have made before. And I think it's because I've aged and grown. And I think we have to be aware that creativity is something that uh grows with us and gets stronger as we age. And so that's the focus of the class. Now, I so I'm doing another rug like that in the class, but it's in blues and it's more expressive, but it's not a project course. I'm not doing the rugs from start to finish. Um, What the course is about is is about uh, using self-expression to get in touch with your creativity as you age kind of thing so it's an odd course there's our you know I I and and some of my courses are like that now like they're uh you know some of my courses are really clear like our hooking neutrals class very clear patterns Mm -hmm. hook you know no you don't have to wonder about it this one is more ill-defined I'd say but I think it's going to be a real smashing course um and what i've done is i've kept a journal for three years so in that you'll you'll get the journals and you're encouraged to write your own journals and there's activities for you to do as an individual but on the last day uh the course is um we have one interactive piece on the very last day on february 18th we're going to have a zoom hook in just like you and i are doing now we're all going to hook together and just discuss the videos and talk about things and question and answer um just kind of like a little february retreat i've been wanting to do that for a couple of years but of course the videos are all up there so you can take the course anytime and if you don't want to do the retreat you can watch the recording of it if you want to um so it's about aging and creativity and how creativity is like even though our bodies will grow older creativity is just something that keeps renewing itself yeah can even you know can get younger even which is a really beautiful thing to think about as we enter midlife and beyond that you know well I'm beyond midlife but yeah (laughs) yeah that's so awesome. That's what it's it's about. Yeah. very exciting. Well, and I love the fact that you don't feel the need to stick to a structure of a certain type of class. Like, I just think that's so much fun and uh, really exciting. And I certainly hope to get to your studio someday. <laughs> well, I hope you do. We're right in Amherst, Nova Scotia. We're the first town when you come into Nova Scotia. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Deanne, for taking the time. I hope lovely. you have a great thank you. afternoon. It was and, nice to um, meet you again. I think we've talked by email before, but yes. Yeah. 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 But Take care. Uh, yeah, well, enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. And thank you everybody for watching today. Okay. See everyone. Thank you. <laughs>